Okay, all right, I have Louisville at home uh, this week. Uh, you know, last year, I think everybody knows just how tough a loss that was for us. Uh, with the circumstance that happened, you know, I think we lost five starters uh, during the game. I think we lost either seven or eight players during the game, and um, then we lost our quarterback on the last play of the game, and that was a real, you know, tough, tough deal there. Um, you know, so this is uh, a game that uh, is very important to us. Uh, you know, I know uh, Louisville didn't play their best this last game, but, uh, you know, I, we know we'll get their best. Their quarterback is one of the top players in all of college football. Uh, he's played a lot of football. Uh, he played really good against us last year. Uh, you know, if I remember right, their back was a little bit against the wall last year when we played them. So we know we can get their best. Uh, you know, we need to improve. You know, that's why I told our team we did some really good things game one, but there's a lot of things that we have to get corrected uh, by game two. So uh, that's what we've been talking about. Uh, we're going to have to play good in all three phases uh, to be able to win the game. Questions? How much of an advantage do you think it's going to be that you had some extra time to prepare for Louisville? Conversely, <clears throat> on their end, they flew home and got home in the wee hours of uh, Sunday yeah. morning. Yeah, I hope it helps. There's no doubt uh, a little bit of extra time, especially being a big game, you know, for us. Uh, you know, that's definitely helped us, and um, you know, hopefully that'll carry over the game. When you're game planning for Louisville, you know, watching film. How much of the film did you watch of last year's game, or you kind of focus more on maybe the Syracuse? Yeah, I think it's all the above. I mean, I think uh, no matter you know if you played somebody before, you know, you look ahead and kind of predict what they're going to do. They'll predict what you're going to do, and then you kind of look and see what they've done this year. Maybe that's different than last year. You gotta, you gotta be able to prepare for really all of the above. Early in the season, I said this last week, you gotta, your playbook has to be big. You gotta be able to adjust. And, uh, you know, they do a lot of different things defensively. They're very unique. Um, you know, they move a lot and twist a lot and uh, blitz a lot. And, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta be patient. Um, speaking of learning lessons from last year, you know, I mentioned Malik Cunningham. You saw him last year. I think you recruited him uh, oh, yeah. back in your day. Um, yeah. And then we've been talking about the linebackers developing through camp. How much of a test do you think uh, the linebackers will have trying to contain a mobile quarterback like Malik Cunningham? Oh, it, it'll be a test for a whole defense. I mean, you know, he's, he's uh, like I said, he's one of the best quarterbacks in college football. I know that uh, things didn't go as well as, you know, they'd like last week. But, you know, uh, he's a phenomenal player. We know that. We saw for first hand last year. So and not only linebackers, the whole defense is going to play well. When you look back at the film and considering the step up in opponent, how do you evaluate what John Rice Plumley did? What do you want to see him do differently this week? Yeah, yeah, th there's no doubt. I mean, you know, that was his first time, you know, playing really a full game in what two years. And so there's nothing like being out there and and uh, there's a couple things he didn't like to have back, but it's very important to him. He's really uh, football savvy, he's a smart guy and so, uh, you know, uh, each game, I think you'll see him improve. You touched on a little bit in your opening statement with Louisville last year in the game. Uh, obviously, the result was one thing coming home and having as many starters out as you did. How did you try to pick up the pieces and not let it spiral out of control? From there? Yeah, that, that was a real challenge. You know, there was a lot of adversity we faced in that game. I mean, you know, they slowed the, the tempo down. You know, every time we subbed, they walked on the field and walked off the field, and it really slowed down the, the tempo. And then, you know, the last play of the game when our quarterback got hurt, they actually called a timeout after we'd already snapped the ball. And usually in the last play of the game, you don't have one desperation play, and then they saw it, and they were able to defend it. So it was a lot of frustrating things that went with the game. But, um, you know, that that's in the in the, in the the past. Our, our team rallied. They handled ourselves like champions after that game. But, uh, you know, this is a new year. And, we're playing at home and we need to play good football. What do you want to see from your wide receivers without the ball? Chip mentioned that the other day. That was maybe one spot in the first game that maybe could stand to improve. Yeah, we just talked about playing playing better without the football. I mean, that's part of it. You know, we got a lot of new guys out there, new offense and learning, you know, on the run. In the first game, we learned a lot. Is blocking, is that something that always takes a little bit longer for receivers? Everyone knows how to catch sometimes, but coming in didn't. No, I mean, I, I think the special ones, uh, they play just as good without the ball. You know, and so that's really what we're looking for. And like I said, we got some new guys that uh, it was their first rodeo with us with this offense. You know, we saw Johnny Richardson and Isaiah Bowser run the ball. What, what, what do you want to see from them in this, in this next game? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're both phenomenal running backs. They did a good job of holding the ball. That's the main thing, you know, and they, they've done that consistently. And, you know, both of them are, are different, you know, and they provide a different, uh, you know, look to the defense. 
you mentioned that the biggest jump for good teams is usually between this first and second week of play. Uh, what lessons do you feel like you got from Thursday night and uh, what, what is it in practice, you know, as much as you can reveal, obviously, yeah. um, that, that you're seeing uplift in, to make that improvement? Yeah, I think the penalties, uh, you know, were, were really the thing that stood out to me that we got to get corrected. Um, you know, so we're working hard to do that. You can't beat yourself, you know, when you're playing a good team. A couple of players after the game on Thursday said that Louisville is a date they had to circle on the calendar. Are you noticing a heightened sense of focus or uh, excitement out there this, this week at given the opponent? Yeah, I think so, you know, especially from the guys that went through that experience last year. I think you use everything you can to, you know, prepare yourself in college football. And so, you know, it's, it's definitely an important game, you know, for them. Did Xavier Townsend, did he earn maybe the top punt return job, or is that to be determined? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. He did a great job with that. Uh, you know, so we'll just kind of see as we, we move through the year. But, you know, there's a good chance you'll see both of them, you know, this week. On special teams, mixed bag for your team. What do you want to see them do to improve? Yeah, well, we got to protect the punter. You know, the punt block was really the thing that stood out. You know, we did block a punt for a touchdown, too. That was, that was really good. Um, you know, but I think we had a few penalties on the, in the kicking game. We had a couple of really good returns. O'Keefe got near the 50-yard line, I think, twice, and we had two of them get called back. Obviously, we had the punt return that was electric uh, that was called back. Um, so, you know, the penalties and protecting the punter really is the, the number one thing. Now he's got some film in, um, you know, for a week there, too. Uh, how do you feel that the uh, offensive line has gelled uh, after a, a week of play there? And how good of an insurance policy is it to have a runner like John Rice Plumley behind him? Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, anytime you've got a, a quarterback that can, can help create, you know, and helps everybody out, including the offensive line. And that was the first time to play together. The two tackles, were, our starting tackle moved to guard. And so, you know, each game, as long as we can stay healthy, you're going to see that group improve uh, each game. I think they got a chance to be really good. Considering the physicality of that game last year against Louisville, what can your guys that played in that game impart upon guys that weren't in that game about the roughness of that match? Yeah, I mean, anytime you're playing a good team, you better buckle up. And our guys understand that, and I think we'll be ready for that. Were you surprised at the result with Louisville the other day? I mean, I don't uh, think anyone saw that score coming. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, uh, that the other team got after them, there's no doubt. I mean, I watched it on TV, and uh, it was impressive, you know, watching what the other team did. But like I said, I think their backs were against the wall when we played them last year. We got their best shot, and we know we will. Well, Barsky missed the field goal you know, with only 14 seconds left on the clock. Yeah. And, you know, was that a situation? You know, how do you feel about that situation for him? Is that a tough place to be in, or should he make that kick? Well, I mean, you know, the clock, you would like it where he could slow down and set his feet. But, you know, we work, you know, that situation. It wasn't like it was like desperate running down to one. And, you know, I mean, we'd like to make that. He knows that. And he's a really good kicker, and I think he'll have a good year. Is that uh, much of a competition in August with Colton Boomer and Daniel? Uh, yeah. How did that one go? Yeah, it was a good competition, especially early. And Colton had a little bit of a, uh, like a quad or something that kind of put him put him behind. But Daniel really came on. He had a really, really good fall camp. So, you know, I think he'll uh, – I think he's set up for a good year kicking for us. Right for Casey's hands on the kickoffs. Yeah. What do you – what did you see in his game? Yeah, he's got a fresh leg. Uh, you know, he kicked, I think, all of them but three, you know, into the end zone pretty good. And, uh, you know, I think he's a weapon. Take a little bit off Daniel, too, to keep his leg a little fresher. At the end of the last year, doing both, we really had to watch him. I think he got worn down just a little bit. And a lot of guys that do both do that. So hopefully that will help keep his leg fresh. It was a year ago this past June, I think, when they initially said they were going to expand the college football playoff to 12. I know a lot of stuff has happened since then. You said going to the Big 12. And now, finally, this past yeah. Friday, they decided, yeah, well, we're going to do the same play after all. So what are your thoughts on that uh, college football playoff expanding and, and how good will that be for UCF? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm just happy that, uh, you know, the leaders of college football got together and did the right thing. It's best for college football and get more teams involved. and. Everything that goes with it, I wish it was a little bit quicker, but hey, uh, at least they got that, that done. And you know, I think that surprised a lot of people that were able to get it done. So hats off to the leaders. You mentioned Cunningham. What else about the Louisville gets your attention? Uh, you know, they're, they're a big stretch team. They do a good job up front. Uh, they got a lot of their guys back uh, on both sides of the football. Uh, defensively, like I said, they, they do a lot of different stuff. Uh, they got some good guys on the back end. and. So, like I said, their their uh, their talent 
talent pool or, or talent level is, is pretty high as far as college football goes. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thank you all. <laughs>